but others don't have that option. Uh, we can wear what our standard uniform is, but um, usually, you know, if you have real bulky clothes on, then, you know, you're going to be restricted of movement. Firefighters have to battle more than flames. The first crew on the scene of an early morning fire at a McDonald's restaurant in Forest Park suffered through 15-degree cold. It's about unbearable because there's no relief. Uh, you get warm from the fire, but then, you know, all of a sudden you have to start cooling off when the fire goes out and everything starts to freeze up on you. Around town, a variety of outdoor workers have their own ways of coping with freezing weather. They all seem to get the job done. But doctors say the effects of hypothermia can set in rapidly if you're not properly dressed for the cold or don't take regular breaks. Now the firefighters we talk to say adrenaline keeps them going, that and the occasional cup of coffee. And doctors say again, take those breaks, get out of the cold when you can. Reporting live from Northeast Atlanta, Ken Watts, Channel 5 Eyewitness News. All right, Ken, that hot coffee does help. Thanks very much. The cold weather is also bad news for your home's pipes. They can freeze and burst. Now, here's how you can prevent that. Leave your faucets dripping, since moving water doesn't freeze as quickly as still water. Open the cupboard door beneath your sink. That lets warm air get to the pipes. And if your pipes are bare, you may want to consider wrapping them with insulation. For hundreds of DeKalb County students who attend class in trailers, the cold is a miserable inconvenience. Imagine having to go outside every time you wanted to go to the bathroom. That's the reality for many students who have to walk to the main school building to use restroom facilities. Our team coverage continues with Channel 5's Angelique Proctor. Some students at Woodward Elementary School take on this hill several times a day. In frigid temperatures, it's all the more difficult. The school is overcrowded, which means 10 trailers double as classrooms. I don't, I don't like that because I try to hurry up to get to the building or to the trailer because it's real cold. Can I you? don't like the trailers really much because we get to come in and out a lot. It's really cold and it's rainy. It's OK, like, walking once, but we have to keep on going back and forth. It's a drag. Yes. Not only are the students complaining, but even the principal concedes all the outdoor travel time affects the learning process. The travel time backwards and forth to the trailer, we could be using that on the inside as instructional time. Here at Woodward, some of the students don't even own heavy coats. Coles and runny noses are constant. They have runny noses a lot because most of the kids um, don't come out with coats on or they don't even wear them to school. We have to leave the trailer on just basic needs, getting water, using the restroom, going to the cafeteria, going for programs, going to check out a book in the library. On days like this, ice and snow can be found in the student's pathway. I don't like it because it's too cold and, and there's it's, it's, um, ice on the, the steps and then we can fail them. It's dangerous. Dangerous? Have you ever seen a classmate fall or anything? Yes. Not only do the students here at Woodward go in and out of the trailers constantly for the bare necessities like going to the bathroom or the cafeteria, but to compound the problem, they don't even have a gymnasium here. So they have to go inside for physical education classes, and as you can see, there is just not enough room. The long-term plan is tied to an upcoming bond issue. If it passes, Montgomery says DeKalb County's new superintendent has promised He'll eliminate all portables, which will mean fewer runny noses and more instructional time. In DeKalb County, Angelique Proctor, Channel 5 Eyewitness News. Now, to add to the inconvenience, Angelique tells us the computer lab is also in the main school building. DeKalb County voters will likely decide on that bond referendum in March. Well, if you do have to go outside, you best bundle up. This is the kind of cold weather that could lead to severe health problems, even to death. Now, here are some things to keep in mind. Dress in layers with special attention to your head, hands, and feet. To avoid frostbite, cover all of your skin. And beware of the dangers of hypothermia. That's when the body's temperature drops below 98.6. Now, the warning signs could include cold armpits and stomach. Hypothermia can lead to death. The cold weather also can take its toll on your car's battery. And here's why. A battery has positive and negative plates that produce energy. Now, the flow of that energy is controlled by a solution surrounding the plates. In extreme cold, that solution turns to water, cutting the flow. When the water freezes into ice, all energy stops and the battery dies. One solution is to bring the battery inside at night. And parking close to the house can help, believe me, 
homes do give off heat. Well, we have to take that bitter cold very, very seriously. Let's check in with Nancy Loveland for the latest on the conditions out there. Hi, Nancy. Well, it's still pretty cold, not quite as cold as what we saw yesterday at this time, but te temperature is still into the 30s. We have had a beautiful day, plenty of sunshine, clear skies tonight. Now, tonight we're not going to have the winds. We're going to have light winds and clear skies, perfect radiational cooling. So we're going to see those temperatures plummet once again. Let's look at some of the temperatures here in the southeast. 34 here in Atlanta, 29 degrees at Asheville. All of our dew points, by the way, into the mid-teens tonight. So with those light winds and clear skies and very dry air in place, we'll be back into the teens again tonight. We're going to go for a low anywhere between 15, maybe near 20 degrees, but definitely bitterly cold again for tonight. Tomorrow we're talking about maybe a little bit of a warm-up, but will we hold on to the sunshine all weekend? I'll have that answer for you coming up at about 522. Back to you. We'll see you then. Thanks, Nancy. It's the final days of the Christmas countdown, and if you're just about out of money, you may be worried about finishing your shopping. Some bargain hunters say you could still get nice gifts at reasonable prices. Channel 5's Angeline Correa joins us live now from North DeKalb Mall, where the frenzy is building. Angeline. Lisa, believe it or not, I am one of those procrastinators. It happens every single year. Wait until the very last minute. Take a look behind me. You can see some people uh, milling about the mall. It's not too busy right now, but it sure is uh, bound to get busy any minute now on this Friday night. We found out that a lot of people spend a lot of time uh, at the very last minute, and they spend a whole lot more money. But there are things you can get out there if you have the patience. The countdown is on, and everyone's got a good excuse. Procrastination. Five days left until Christmas, and the shopping frenzy is about to begin. These last-minute hopefuls make a stop at Wonder Dollar, a store where everything is just a buck or less. You have to look very hard. Some of the stuff is great, some of it's not. So you have to look very hard. But you can find some good things. At this late stage in the game, shoppers know they're just lucky to get a find. I see you're getting very excited over coupon holders. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, um, there's somebody that wants one of these, actually, that was freaking out because I got one at the dollar store before. And uh, once again, it was great. So you can't find stuff at the dollar at, store, at the, the, dollar store mm -hmm. at the last minute for sure, Christmas. Sure. But not only can you get practical gifts, weird present seekers are getting lucky, too. What the heck is that? <laughs> I don't know, but it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a dollar. Yeah, and it's a dollar. And you can pick up things with it, probably. <laughs> I could find something to pick up. What would we call that? Yeah, a dinosaur or a crocodile, alligator. And this one's a shark. <laughs> well, who said holiday presents have to make sense? At least this noisemaker doubles as a back scratcher. It's an eye and it rivets. I think my kids will like it because it's um, it's just gross, kind of gory looking. Speaking of key rings, how about a high-tech lotto predictor? A dollar investment, how many million a return? That, that could work out well, huh? So since you're buying that gift for somebody, if they do win the lotto, they're you're going to have to... They're going to split with me. <laughs> I was trying to get a split of that, too. Back here live at North DeKalb Mall, you can see some of the busiest spots. Obviously, the toy store right back in here. Uh, it's sure to be busy, as we said, this weekend. A lot of last-minute shopping going on, but uh, people say they can still get a bargain. Reporting live at North DeKalb Mall, I'm Angeline Correa, Channel 5 Eyewitness News. All right, we got to wait until Christmas Eve, though. That's when the real frenzy that's, takes place. That's so. when we got to hear the real excuses. <laughs> that's true. Thanks, Angeline. Okay. We want to bring you up to date now on the breaking story at the top of our show. A Fulton County police officer shot during an apparent robbery attempt. Russ Spencer's in our newsroom. He has the very latest update for us. Russ? Well, Jim, we have dramatic pictures to show you from Chopper 5 right now. Chopper 5 hovering over the scene near the Chattahoochee River where the suspect is being apprehended by police. You are looking at a live picture now. You can see the, the river there on the bottom left of your screen. The man in the green jacket there, I don't know if you can pick that out exactly, but toward the top of that collection of people. Those are the police officers. Just a few seconds ago, the suspect himself was down there along the river, and he moved up and has apparently been apprehended by those police officers. They were chasing him through the woods after a house fire. This all started earlier this afternoon, uh, just about a half an hour ago. Uh, reports of an officer down at a home along Holcomb Bridge Road at 8440 Holcomb Bridge Road. As police arrived there to rescue this officer, they found that house fully engulfed, engulfed in flames. The officer has since been taken to North Fulton Hospital. We do not know his condition right now. Initially, they were talking about life flighting him to the hospital. Here you can, here you're looking now at a picture of that house in flames. Fire trucks have now gotten to the scene. They apparently had difficulty getting water there initially. 
Apparently, the officer who was shot was responding to an alarm at this house. And when he arrived there, this is now a live picture of the, of the water going down on that house. Obviously, the house is going to be a total loss. And uh, pilot John Massey giving us the perspective there. Apparently, when other police officers arrived, they saw the suspect running into the woods. You can see now that he apparently went across part of the Chattahoochee River before the DeKalb County Police helicopter and other officers there on the scene were able to locate the suspect. Uh, certainly fortunate for them in their search that uh, all the leaves are off the trees now and he didn't have the opportunity he, he would have in the summertime to hide there. But this, of course, again, is a live picture of the arrest taking place of the suspect. We do not know if that suspect started the fire. That certainly would be the implication. But at this point, we do know that he ran from that house that was on fire after, according to police, at least that's their suspicion, he shot a Fulton County police officer. We'll have more on that officer's condition as we know more. Jim? All right. Thank you very much, Russ, and good work by the crew in Channel 5. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank well, you Coming up, it's called Black English, and some say it's perfectly acceptable. Others say it's just bad grammar. We want to know what you think. Tonight, an all-new episode, Human Drama, Life and Death Struggles, Approaching Storms, Make or Break Battles, Human Drama that Hits Close to Home. Tonight and every night, an all-new episode, and always real. Tonight at 10, Channel 5 Eyewitness News Primetime. It's America's number one primetime local news, and it's always based on a true story. Only at 10, only on Channel 5. January 26th, in a special live broadcast, after the Super Bowl, you're invited to see a winning tradition continue. You've just won $10 million from Publishers Clearinghouse. <laughs> Be a part of something magical as it happens. January 26th, watch who wins this year's $10 million from Publishers Clearinghouse. Live as it's happening after the Super Bowl. Better yet, enter now and the winner could be you. Your shopping days are dwindling fast. So is your holiday budget. But you still have a few final touches in mind for your decor before the guests arrive. Is it time to panic? No way. Not when there's Haverty's Holiday Weekend Sale with great last-minute savings. Plus, 12 months no-interest financing to stretch your holiday dollars even farther. Haverty's Holiday Weekend Sale. Save now, save all year. Even Santa can't beat that. Ho, ho, ho! Bring the family out to Stone Mountain's Better Than Ever Holiday Celebration. Lots more lights, colorful displays, Santa's workshop, the popular train and horse-drawn carriage rides, even a holiday laser show. It's all here at Atlanta's best holiday value, Stone Mountain Park. Atlanta's best entertainment value is now a great gift idea. You can purchase Stone Mountain's annual parking permit at the regular price of $25 and buy a second one for only $15. Hurry, offer ends December 31st. A controversy is brewing over language now that a California school district has voted to accept so-called black English as a primary language. It's called Ebonics, a combination of ebony and phonics. And while California is setting up an Ebonics curriculum, Georgia's public school educators are waving it off as another trend that won't help black students. Channel 5's Brenda Wood has the story. They come to school speaking what they've heard at home. Uh-oh. Robin can't remember where Bear lives. Some educators think their African-American culture and its language should be incorporated into the teaching environment. Happy. Happy. All people that practice a culture have a language and a set of prescribed rules. Professor Kakava Zauditu says black English, or Ebonics, is a means to an end, an African-rooted language that, for instance, doesn't recognize the verb to be or the TH sound. Instead of this, that, these, and those, it becomes just that, these, and those. Other people can call it uh, omissions or distortions, but these are phonemic patterns that are consistent with African languages that are currently spoken on the continent of Africa. She says it should be used as a tool to help teach African-American students standard English. It gives an entree or helps to build a bridge to that which they're trying to achieve by using the tools that they already have. 
In Oakland, California, Ebonics will be an official part of the curriculum. The school system hopes to get federal funding for Ebonics to improve the students' English. Pitts Elementary here in Atlanta fits a very similar profile to the schools in Oakland. It's majority African-American. Most of the students here come from the Perry Homes housing development, and nearly all of the students score below national average on their standardized tests. This could be very fertile ground for an Ebonics program. But Atlanta School Superintendent says Atlanta City Schools ain't going there. They don't want us to take the language that's in the neighborhood every day and say, that's the language that's in school. That's, what, that's not what they view school as being. They don't want Ebonics. They do not want Ebonics. How does this translate to real life for kids and open more doors instead of closed doors for them? But unlike Oakland, Ebonics is only fodder for a spirited conversation here. Still, educators will be watching closely to see if Ebonics finds any success in the classroom. Now, to give you a better idea of how it's supposed to work, for example, in a lesson, the class comes across the word dilapidated. Now, that's not always in the language of some African-American students. But if a teacher could say, it means toe down, toe up, can't be helped no more, then the student might better understand. Supporters say there's also a self-esteem component to it all. A confident student, they say, makes a much better learner. I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot more about this. We will. Yeah. Thanks, Brenda. And that brings us to our Feedback 5 topic tonight. We are asking, what do you think of black English being accepted in schools? Now, here's how you can reach us. Our email address, feedback5 at wagatv.com. And again, that's feedback5 at wagatv.com. Our fax number, area code 404-724-4477. That's 404-724-4477. And feel free to write. Our address is Feedback 5, WAGA, 1551 Briarcliff Road, Northeast. That's Atlanta, Georgia, 30306. And we'll have some of your responses coming up on Eyewitness News at 6. Now, we want to return you to our breaking news story, the story we told you about at the top of our newscast. A Fulton County police officer shot during a robbery. Channel 5's Russ Spencer joining us from the newsroom with the very latest. Russ? Well, Jim, we want to show you more live pictures from the scene. This is near Holcomb Bridge Road and Barnwell Road. Right now, you can see through the woods there the, the perpetrator, the suspect in this case. He is in handcuffs with police on either side of him. He just moved now behind the trees. He's wearing a green shirt. We're going to stay with us until you get a better look at the gentleman who police had been searching for since about 4.30 this afternoon. If uh, John Massey can pull back now you get the perspective of where all of this started, according to Fulton County Police. At about 4.30, a police officer came to this scene responding to an alarm, and he was shot in the process of responding to that alarm. Now, police tell us that suspect ran into the woods. They gave chase. Uh, as we, Maybe we can go back in, John, and give people a better look at the suspect and how many police officers were involved in this search. You can see there are probably a dozen of them surrounding him now. He is in handcuffs, has been, since they caught him along the banks of the Chattahoochee River, perhaps a quarter to a half mile away. There you can get the perspective. It's difficult up there in the wind. There's no question about that, especially when you zoom in. That makes it more difficult to get that steady shot. But you can see the police officers surrounding the suspect there, the fire trucks on the scene. Unfortunately, that home there at 8440 Holcomb Bridge Road is a total loss. Apparently, firefighters had a difficult time getting water to the scene initially. It's quite a large home there. And again, there apparently had been an alarm at that house that the police officer was responding to, a Fulton County police officer. He has been taken to North Fulton Hospital. We are still trying to check on his condition, but we understand that he was, in fact, shot. There is the man right now who police chased through the woods, about to get into that Fulton County police car. You can see just how many police officers there are on the scene. Firefighters still trying to fight that fire, but whatever they do, that house is going to be a total loss. We'll have much more on this story for you, more on the officer's condition as we know more on Eyewitness News, continuing at 5 and at 6. All right, Russ, and as I tried to say before, great job by the crew mm -hmm. at Chopper 5. Coming up on Eyewitness News at 5, Nancy Loveland will tell us if this bitter cold is going to last into the weekend. Plus, if you're planning to travel for the holidays, you're far from alone. We're going to have some tips to make your trip smooth sailing.
find the highest quality, lowest priced used cars right here at Atlanta Toyota in Gwinnett. Not to mention the best selection, all in the covered convenience of the Southeast's largest used car showroom. Here's what I'm talking about, folks. You can choose from six 1996 Camry LEs at only $14,988, well equipped with power windows, power locks, and more. How about a 94 Camry LE? This has the V6 and more at $13,988. Choose from five 1993 Camry LEs at only $11,988. 92 Camry LE for just $10,988. You know, sometimes the best new cars make the best used cars. Here's a 96 Corolla DX for $11,988 or a 96 Tercel DX for only $99,88. These are typical examples. You know you can call us right now. If I haven't shown you the car or truck you're looking for, chances are we have it in stock. It's 476-8282, wherever you live in the Southeast. If you want more selection, more savings, and more ways to finance, remember, never prejudge your credit, because with our Auto Club, we can help you reestablish your credit. Volume selling at Atlanta Toyota in Gwinnett. The cold temperature is going to stay with us at least into the beginning of the weekend, mm -hmm. right, Nancy? Yeah, it's going to be cold again tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Again, the beautiful skies that yeah. we saw today. But temperatures, again, are going to be falling into mm -hmm. the middle to upper teens again for tonight. Let's get started with your current conditions. Now, this is pretty close to the high that we hit today. It's a beautiful sunset out there, almost a cloudless sky, but we only have 33 degrees. Look at the dew point, right around 14 degrees. Much lighter winds this evening than last evening with a relative humidity of 45%. Here's our high temperature today. This this was it. We hit about 34 degrees, a low last night of 18. That's 17 degrees below normal for this time of year. We're going to be well below normal again for tonight. Cloudless sky. Satellite picture confirms that here in the southeast as well. We're going to hold on to that sunshine throughout the day tomorrow. And with those clear skies and light winds, here's what our overnight lows are looking like into the mid to upper teens, right around 16, 17, maybe 18 degrees. But notice the warm up back off to the west. We're going to see a wind shift. This high pressure that's been dominating us today is going to split and grow a little bit strengthen. We're going to see our winds become southeasterly. Not very strong tomorrow, but still plenty of sunshine. But those southeasterly winds will give us a little more warmth than what we saw today. We'll see high temperatures tomorrow right around 40 to 45 degrees, but even warmer temperatures behind that as we go on throughout the weekend. So your forecast is calling for clear skies and very cold 15 to 20 for overnight lows with light and variable winds. Tomorrow, just a ton of sunshine and a little bit warmer, 40 to 45 degrees. Southeasterly winds will be light and we have a little more of a, for, uh, a, little more of a warm up coming up in your forecast and some rain as well. We'll take a close look at that coming up at 6 o'clock. Lisa, back to you. All right, thanks, Nancy. Like the song says, there's no place like home for the holidays. That's why airports across the country are packed and will be for the next several days. Here in Atlanta, Hartsfield is expecting the largest passenger load today. Channel 5's Morris Diggs is at the airport to let us know how things are going out there. Morris? Lisa, it looks like Kids Day out here at Hartsfield with all the families headed to Grandma's house. And with the whole family in tow, you know, it takes a little extra planning. Holidays reunite families like Crystal Bailey and her two children after a whole year. Santa Claus is going to be really good to them this year. It's going to make up for lost time. But the travel, the packed airports. <laughs> airports there, no place for kids. Uh, grit it out and try to make it happen. They're flying to two cities to see both families. So it's been first leg one location and the other leg the problem. While things appear to be going smoothly outside, inside the terminal at some of the ticket counters, they didn't have enough staff to deal with this long line. I had a relatively easy time. I don't have to stand in these lines, thank goodness. Yeah. It's all been taken care of. Okay. Pick up your ticket in advance if you can. Right here. Stay in order, please don't get out of order. One o'clock flight. And plan how you'll get to the airport. And don't leave at the last minute. But the main thing to remember during the season or any time when there's a big travel rush is to have patience. Congestion should be expected. It doesn't have to be something you dread. We're going to go see Grandmother and Grandpa in Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City, huh? Yeah. Okay, so you're getting kind of early jump on it then. Trying to. Okay, Lisa, I'm already all out of time for my segment during the five. I only have time to say goodbye to one of my heroes, Jim Axel. Bye, Jim. T-Roll. All right. Thank you very much, Morris. He heard you. All right. Well, coming up new for you on Eyewitness News at 6, believe it or not, it is not too late to get a bargain on a plane ticket. But, of course, there are plenty of restrictions. Find out what it takes to fly cheap so close to Christmas. That's coming up new for you at 6. There's much more news ahead at 5.30. A few coins in a Salvation Army kettle may not sound that exciting. But wait till you hear how much they're worth.
Plus, in the next few hours, O.J. Simpson finds out if he regains custody of his children. We'll have an update on that and his civil trial. The Falcons fly into Jacksonville and try and tame the Jaguars on Fox NFL Sunday. The Falcons' Jamal Anderson has been preying on opposing defenses and looks to turn the Jags into kittens. And one man to beat. It's a touchdown. The Jags' high-flying Keenan McCardell leads the speedy receiving core as they need a victory to keep their playoff hopes alive. It's a Fox NFL doubleheader. The Falcons battle the Jaguars. Coverage begins noon Eastern, 9 Pacific. Looking for the perfect gift? Gift the gift that grows. Chia Herb Garden includes everything you need to grow fresh herbs right in your own kitchen. Four distinctive terracotta clay pots and saucers, six different seed packets to choose from, instruction booklet, recipes, and the natural chia growing sponge. It's clean and easy. No more mess or worries. The chia growing sponge maintains just the right amount of air and moisture. Place a moistened chia sponge in each pot. Sprinkle on herb seeds, water, and watch it grow. Ch -ch -ch Chia. Cooking with fresh herbs is healthy and makes food taste delicious. Mmm. -hmm. Grow herbs indoors in the winter. Transplant them in the spring. Look for chia on the box. Chia Herb Garden, the gourmet gift that everyone can grow. Chia Herb Garden's available at Eckerd, Big B Drug, Drug Emporium, Kmart, Drugs for Less, McCrory, Harco, and Woolworth stores. Makes a great gift. Get great prices on Sealy Bedding right now at Roberts. All sizes, one fantastic low price. You can have your choice of twin, full, queen, or king size firm sleep Sealy Bedding for only $99 each piece. That's right, just $99 each piece for any size Sealy firm sleep bedding. Buy now and get 12 months, same as cash. Plus, Roberts offers next day delivery on bedding. And at Roberts, we guarantee we'll beat any price or pay you double the difference. Bottom line, it costs less at Roberts. You're watching Channel 5 Eyewitness News with Georgia's largest broadcast news team. It's 5.30. Here's what's making news right now. They seem to be everywhere during the holidays. Salvation Army volunteers wringing their hearts out for your spare change. But last night, someone dropped an extraordinary gift in a DeKalb County kettle. It's shiny, it's valuable, and we explain in this Channel 5 exclusive, it's a gift the Salvation Army won't forget. Good evening. How you doing? Merry Christmas. This is my way of spreading the word of joy. My way. It's fantastic. Now you take one of these and you give one to a friend, okay? Merry Christmas. God bless you. Thank you. Shivering, but smiling. Jimmy Mill says it's not about how cold you are. It's about how warm your heart is. If he can stay out here in the cold and shake that bell, he deserves a little bit. The Salvation Army cadet is happy to get just about any donation dropped into his kettle at North DeKalb Mall. But last night, someone clinked in unexpected offering. Two one-ounce gold South African Krugerrand coins, each worth about $340, a gift discovered last night. I sat down, I said, oh my God. I heard him say it and it wasn't that quick. It was, oh my God, what's going on? <laughs> Jimmy Mills says he's just out here for the people and sometimes people can surprise you. I think it's kind of great. He's not looking for recognition. He's just putting it in the pot so that uh, it can be used for the Lord's work. So I think that's great. So did you see the person? No, nobody knows who did it. So somebody just went in there and put it in there and... Oh, that's from there. What Santa Claus. It's that kind of stuff that, you know, when you tell the folks that are out here freezing, it makes it worth it for them sometimes. You know, they know that they're doing something good. Hello, Merry Christmas. And something Jimmy Mills will never forget. A amen to that. I will say they have a very warm heart, and God bless you, whoever you are, wherever you are. Merry Christmas. The Salvation Army hopes to sell the gold coins to the highest bidder and then donate the proceeds. And you would be amazed at how much the Christmas kettles raise each year. Last holiday season, Georgians donated $650,000 to kettle ringers. The money helps the Salvation Army carry out its charity work. O.J. Simpson will find out in just a few hours whether he'll be awarded custody of the children that he had during his marriage to Nicole Brown Simpson. Now, Simpson's attempting to win custody of the two. 
who've been living with their grandparents since June of 1994. Simpson signed over temporary guardianship to the Browns after his arrest. Now, the Browns say Simpson is an unfit parent. The judge's ruling scheduled to be released at 7.15 our time. Simpson did not get to testify in his wrongful death civil trial today. Most of that time was taken up by prosecutors as they questioned defense witness Robert Groden. Now, he's the so-called photographic expert who claimed that a picture of Simpson in shoes linked to the murders is a fake. Well, Fox News reporter Brian Jenkins is in Santa Monica where Simpson's civil trial is underway. Brian? Oh, it has been gritty today. And the judge even said at several points he's had enough. Nonetheless, both sides have engaged in an acrimonious war over the credibility, or lack thereof, of Robert Grondon. Photo expert Robert Grodin says this picture showing O.J. Simpson wearing the incriminating Bruno Mali shoes is a fake. Plaintiffs say it's real, that it's Grodin's resume that's bogus. Hammered about exaggerating his experience, the photo expert admitted he's a high school dropout who's never taken a photo class and that he's not a member of any professional group dedicated to authenticating photographs. Meantime, O.J. Simpson is poised to win back custody of his two youngest children. Legal experts say California law favors placing children with their natural parents. Simpson expects to get a ruling today via fax. He won't be taking the stand today in the wrongful death civil trial to make way for toxicologist Frederick Readers. He's expected to testify that some of the crime scene blood drops contained a preservative called EDTA, used by the LAPD crime lab. The defense says the presence of EDTA indicates those drops were planted by police. Robert Blazier, the defense team's blood evidence specialist, is going to be questioning Reader. Within days, Blazier is expected to undergo back surgery. So the defense is forced to put Reader on today before losing Blazier for the rest of the trial. And that hurts the defense's strategy to put O.J. Simpson on as the last last witness before the uh, holiday break in hopes of leaving the jury with something more positive to think about regarding O.J. Simpson. In Santa Monica, I'm Brian Jenkins, Fox News. All right, and now a two-week recess in that trial. Thanks, Brian. Just ahead on Eyewitness News at 5, the man who gave us a better understanding of outer space has died. A look back at the life of Carl Sagan. And next, the hostage standoff in Peru will have the very latest on the changing situation there. This week, you may not like what he does. One man's art could be another man's pornography. But his legal battles reaffirmed First Amendment freedoms. You can hate him, but he protected all of us. Hollywood's take on the life of Larry Flint. Plus, they called him the neighborhood bully, and this man decided he'd had enough. He was going to be judge, jury, and executioner. Is his killer a victim or vigilante? Monday at 12.30 on Channel 5. Now, you don't have to search the world for a perfect gift. Handmade in the tradition of ancient artists. Ch -ch -ch -chia. It's Chia Pets and new Chia Heads, the pottery that grows. It's easy. Soak your Chia overnight, spread the seeds, keep it watered, and watch it grow. Ch -ch -ch -chia. And now there's new Chia Heads. Chia Professor, Chia Clown, Chia Kid, Chia Guy. And don't forget about Chia Pets. With Chia Puppy, Chia Kitten, Chia Turtle, Chia Bunny, Chia Frog, Chia Hippo, and Chia Tree. Ch -ch -ch -chia. It's a treasure of a gift. Collect them all. Chia Pets and Chia Heads, the pottery that grows. Chia Pets and Chia Heads are available at Eckerd, Big B Drugs, Drug Emporium, Kmart, Rite Aid, Drugs for Less, Harco, and Woolworth stores. Makes a great gift. Make this holiday season special. Give the gift of infinite wisdom, exploration, and fun. Open doors to the world and to the mind through the gift of the Internet. Get online at Wagonet, WAGA TV's direct Internet service. It's only $19.95 for unlimited use. The Internet is an invitation into the future. Give your family the opportunity to see it all. From your friends in cyberspace, WAGA TV. Just call 770-569-8800. Okay, you're looking for a little inspiration? High Five Eyes has tons of cool stuff left, and you don't have to pay a dime for a year. Now that's what I call a gift.
The hostages being held in Lima, Peru, are getting help from the Red Cross. Today, the relief agency delivered 500 meals to the Japanese ambassador's residence, where rebels are holding nearly 400 people. Now, earlier in the day, the hostages put handwritten messages in the building's windows. They were asking for food, for water, and the return of lights and telephones. That standoff began Tuesday night. The man who gave the world a better understanding of the planets and stars died this morning at a hospital in Seattle, Washington. 62-year-old Carl Sagan died of pneumonia. He also had a bone marrow disease that he'd been fighting for the past two years. Sagan was one of the world's most renowned astronomers. In 1978, Sagan won the Pulitzer Prize for his book titled The Dragons of Eden, Speculations on the Evolution of Human Intelligence. More changes are on the horizon for the Citadel in South Carolina. The military institution will assign adult supervisors to each of its barracks starting next month. The supervisors will stay overnight in the barracks. School officials say they're doing this to avoid problems like the ones the school is already facing. Two female cadets at the Citadel say they were the victims of many hazing incidents. They're taking legal action against the school. And up next on Eyewitness News at 5, the fans go wild as the best of the best get ready for the Battle of the Gridiron. We'll bring you all of the excitement. Next, enjoying the holidays without packing on the pounds. Health reporter Tana Bracken shows us how it can be done. Ho, ho, ho! It's the Famous Footwear Holiday Half Price Sale. Every second pair is half price. All women's, men's, and kids' brands. Get Famous Famous Footwear. Now at Pep Boys, get floor mats, Silver Guard car covers, and sheepskin seat covers at $54.99. Pep Boys, everything but gas. You've never had anything, anything like this. Rapsy. Long John's Wrap? It's the freshest idea yet. You make my mouth say. Crispy chicken, shrimp, or fish. You make everything. Your choice, three amazing sauces. Groovy. Rapsy. Wrapped up with all kinds of fresh stuff. All for just $1.99 or $2.99. Take a fresh look at Long John Silver's. Wrap thing. I, I think, think I, I love, love you. you. The smart clapper. Clap on. Clap on. The smart clapper. Clap things on. Clap things on. No installation is required. Just plug it in. Clap on your lights before you enter a room. It makes life easier. Clap on the music. Clap on the fun. It's great for hard to reach places. Turn the dial for convenience and security. Your lights will turn on at the first sound it hears. And the smart clapper lets you clap on your TV clap without on. getting up. Clap on. Clap on. Clap on. Thanks. The Smart Clapper. The Smart Clapper is available at Eckert, Drug Emporium, Woolworth, Kmart, Macquarie, Harco, participating Ace, and True Value Hardware stores. Makes a great gift. Christmas is just a few days away. If you haven't gotten that list to Santa yet, you can email him on the internet. Find out how Monday on Good Day Atlanta. Next. Yum, yum. Cookies, candy, and pie around this time of year. That's why holiday eating is a diet disaster for most of us. But it doesn't have to be. Channel 5 health reporter Tana Bracken joins us now with some tips on how to avoid piling on the extra pounds. How can you do that when I'm looking at this? No way possible. I know, I know. And, you know, the station has been cookie central for uh -huh. the past few oh, days, yeah. have you noticed? And you probably have something like this at your office, too. Platters full of cakes, cookies, and candy. At this time of year, there's always something wonderful and wonderfully fattening to eat. And it's okay to indulge. The trick is not to overindulge. <laughs> Catherine Hyatt is in the gym today, running off the effects of holiday parties. Too many parties, too many sweets. Parents always like, you know, the chocolate stuff and all the rich sweet stuff, which is always tempting, but, um, you know, most of the parties I've been to, it's always more the alcohol than it is the sweets. Juggling plates, drinks, and holding conversation can take your attention away from what you're eating. Bite for bite, holiday sweets and hors d'oeuvres are the most caloric, fat-rich foods you'll ever eat. There's a trend of overeating during the holidays, but also because of the types of foods that we serve, there's also a tendency to increase the number of fatty foods that we 
uh, eat during the holidays. Holiday overeating not only packs on the pounds, it can raise your cholesterol too. But you can trim the fat without trimming the fun. Try budgeting your calories the same way you budget your money. That's not difficult to cut calories during the holiday season if you do it sensibly and take these tips to heart. Don't skip meals. Going to a party with a hungry stomach can sabotage even the strongest willpower. Make just one trip to the buffet. Often a taste is all you need to satisfy your craving. Split those delicious desserts. A piece of pecan pie adds up to 38 grams of fat, so sharing is an easy way to spread the holiday cheer. And avoid foods high in fat. When possible, choose vegetables and fruit. With the hectic holiday pace that most of us keep, it's pretty hard to get into the gym to keep up with your regular workout. But if you do make a point to come in here, you'll find it easier to keep the weight off. A lot of people sort of sacrifice the time in the holidays for their exercise time, and exercise is just as important as eating habits. Catherine Hyatt understands that, and that's why she's here today. So she can party now without piling on the pounds. Actually, no, I've kind of like maintained, but I've, I think I've done all right. That's great, But though. Christmas isn't over yet, neither is New Year's, so... <laughs> okay, here's something to keep in mind. The next time you belly up to the holiday buffet, the average person gains seven pounds during the Christmas and New Year holiday period. So keep your eating under control now. That's one less resolution you'll have to make January 1st. I have a trainer who calls me every day. Lisa, yes. what, what damage did you do? Oh, okay, yep, so yep. you have to have somebody. Well, here's one more. Okay, thank Happy you. I'll holidays. sneak this one. Happy holidays <laughs> to you, Tana. Thanks a lot. Okay, we'll see you later. Still to come on Eyewitness News at 5. He's seen a lot and been to a lot of places in his television career. Now we take a look back at some of Jim Axel's shining moments as he prepares to say goodbye. But first, this. The high school state football mania continues as the pep rallies go on today at Lakeside and Brookwood. We'll have the story coming up. Tomorrow at every Macy's, it's Super Saturday. One super day of savings storewide. Doors open 7 a.m. plus a preview day today. This weekend, we're staying open till midnight during our biggest and final sale of the year, right here at Atlanta Toyota. What a great time to save on a 97 Camry LE at $17,988. There are 20 to choose from this weekend, or buy that same LE with $249 down, just $249 a month. Choose from 30 new 97 Corollas, automatic or five-speed, air and cassette, your choice at $13,688, or 30 brand new 97 Classic Edition Corollas with power windows and locks, just $14,688. This weekend at Atlanta Toyota in Gwinnett. Channel 5 Eyewitness News, Atlanta's news leader in Bell South Mobility. The leader in cellular service are teaming up so you can be a part of news as it happens. You'll receive a free cellular telephone and a free Star 5 line with direct access to the Eyewitness Newsroom so you can report breaking news to Channel 5. For details on how to get your free cellular phone and 24-hour Bell South Mobility Star 5 service, call Southeast Telecom at 955-1900. The Channel 5 Eyewitness News Star 5 line. Dedicated, determined, dependable. This Christmas, every gift from Hellsberg Diamonds is a sure thing because every piece is backed by the most comprehensive guarantee in jewelry. It guarantees our quality and our expertise. It guarantees you can return or exchange any gift she doesn't love. The I Am Loved Complete Satisfaction Guarantee from Hellsberg Diamonds. About the only thing it doesn't guarantee is she'll be surprised. It's diamond earrings. The grand opening celebration of our new Buckhead store is nearly over, and that means time is running out. We've opened our biggest store in Buckhead, and all Robert stores are celebrating by offering 12 months same as cash. Choose from our entire selection of name brand furniture, bedding, appliances, and electronics. These are the final days of our grand opening celebration, so hurry and take advantage of 12 months same as cash. Plus, remember, we guarantee we'll beat any price or pay you double the difference. Bottom line, it costs less at Robert's. Rejoice. It's a day of celebration. So let your family spend it with our family. It's a good day Atlanta Christmas, 7 to 9 a.m., right here on Channel 5. The high school football state finals this weekend. That means the buses are loaded up with fans, bands, and cheerleaders set to root for their team. And Channel 5 sports reporter Carla Moore is here to bring us up on that fan <laughs> frenzy. That's right, and I made it through the mobs of all the <laughs> pep rallies today. The Lakeside Vikings and Brookwood Broncos will fight for a state title tomorrow night. Both schools psyched up their teams with some rowdy pep rallies today. Brookwood will be looking for their first ever state title, and this morning sent their Broncos south 
to the perennial high school power, Valdosta. The Brookwood Band and students braved the cold this morning to send off their beloved Broncos heading to states. Are you going to dress like this too? Oh, I'll be, I'll be pimped out tomorrow. Uh, you, uh -oh. Luckily, you're going down south, huh? Yes. Is that a Burger King hat? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll wear anything at a pep rally to keep warm. I'll wear anything. We're all freezing, but we're just all really excited that we're going, so it's great. Well, you got the warmest outfit of everyone. <laughs> Then the coolest outfit goes to Santa Claus, here to deliver Brookwood's Christmas wish. We can deliver anything that you work hard enough for. At Lakeside, they move their pep rally inside, and they're getting psyched up to play Thomas County Central tomorrow night. All the teachers, you know, are really supportive of us. All the students are being real supportive of us, you know. Knowing that it's far away, a lot of people are saying they're coming to support us. I'm a senior. This is my last pet rally, and, you know, there's a lot of emotions going on with me. Number one! For Lakeside, 1991 was the last state title. Now they'll go for 1996. <laughs> He's also rehearsing for MTV. Lakeside is ranked six, heading to Thomas County Central. They're ranked number one. And Brookwood will face a team in Valdosta that has 23 state titles. And that is wow. going to be a tough challenge oh, for them. Yeah. Football Sounds is like king. It. it is. Thanks, girl. Time now to check in with Nancy Loveland for our hometown weather. Nancy. In a four-letter word, we're talking cold. Temperatures have fallen off four degrees just in the last hour. Currently, most of us are about 30 degrees, a little cooler, 29 degrees up at Dahlonega. We're all going to be in the same boat tonight. Temperatures into the mid to upper teens once again. That'll be our last very cold night, but probably tomorrow night we'll be into the 20s. So certainly cold weather will hold for a little while yet, but we will be warmer than what we were today. Tom tomorrow, temperatures will be about 40 to 45 degrees, and the warm-up will continue for a while. We've got your extended forecast coming up at 6 o'clock. Back to you. We'll see you then. Thanks, Nance. And coming up new on Eyewitness News at 6, we'll show you why thousands of little angels in the metro area are going to have a very Merry Christmas thanks to the handiwork of Santa's helpers. And next on Eyewitness News at 5, he's wrapping up more than three decades of bringing the news to you. We'll take a final look into the Axel Files. Next, Rosie. Swing. It's Mike Myers. Hey, you're Mike Myers. What do you have on the back of your head there, Mike? Well, plus Broadway sensation Betty Buckley. That's all coming your way on the next Rosie O'Donnell Show. Monday at 4 on Channel 5. This Christmas, Sliders travels to a world where malls are as big as cities. Wow, this is amazing. But if you dare to stop shopping... It's like a drug addiction. It could cost you your life. The bracelets shock you if you go out of your approved zone. So grab your credit card. Fuck! A father's terrifying secret... I felt safe, but it wouldn't be discovered. ...is about to become his family's worst nightmare. Millennium, tonight at 9, 8 Central. The holiday season is a time for family, friends, and good food. And you'll find holiday favorites priced low every day at Winn-Dixie. Recently, we checked prices on holiday items. We purchased 84 of the same name brands and compared price for price at Winn-Dixie, Publix, and Kroger. Winn-Dixie was 13% lower than Publix and 15% lower than Kroger on these items. For low prices on holiday favorites, shop Winn-Dixie, the low price leader. Want to put a free cellular phone under the tree? Well, you have only four days left. If you want to give an AirTouch companion plan for Christmas. Now as little as $4.95, but no more than $9.95 a month. But you have only four days left. So hurry to a participating agent or AirTouch store. Or call 1-800-AIRTOUCH now. And all year round, nothing escapes the power of a dirt devil. 
closed captioning of this newscast is brought to you by U.S. Health Care. Okay, we don't like farewells around here, but it's hard to believe. Uh, but it's time to say goodbye to Jim Axel. And as most of you know by now, Jim's retiring. And after 34 years, this is his last newscast at WAGA. Needless to say, it's an emotional time for all of us here who love Jim. And we know many of you will miss him, too. Channel 5's Tom Corbin joins us now with a look back at the many highlights of Jim's extraordinary career. Well, some personal perspective. A reporter named Tom was born in 1957. Jim Axel already had one year of airtime under his cummerbund. Forty years later, the two sit side by side, the elder closing his career, the younger paying homage to a man who served as an example for generations. That example is how broadcast journalism is done. An example set at the dawn of the medium, an example still strong in the twilight of the Axel Files. The nation certainly knew the civil rights struggle was here in 62. Go home or go to your church. This march will not continue. Uh, it was probably the major story that was taking place all over at least the southern half of this country uh, was the fact that people were recognizing that uh, black Americans had more rights than they were getting. <laughs> television had a major impact on the civil rights struggle. Television had a major impact on the Vietnam War and the rise of feeling in the nation against the Vietnam War. President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, the assassination of President John F. Kennedy, uh, what to me was a kind of a turning point because it was at that point that people realized how television could just be so invasive into their lives. I think any reporter worth his salt likes getting on the street if it's a good story. Does being a prisoner of war family isolate you from society? The program they also serve, you know, 1970. Very heartrending to have to deal with the families and loved ones uh, of those men who were prisoners of war in Vietnam. Today, TV5 News Scene begins a week-long series of reports on the aerosol ozone controversy. It was here at Aeromist Corporation that I got my education in aerosol packaging. It was just a story that grabbed me reading it off the wires. The fact that the hairspray and the aerosol cans we were using 15 years from now were going to be destroying part of our ozone layer. Inside Atlanta, the job of WAGA Special Unit. I left Anchoring in 77 and uh, became part of the Special Investigators Unit. Now, I did a number of stories that I was very proud of doing. Uh, got a doctor out of the state. A private detective put in jail. Only on five, because you have the right to know. My producer and I were told to go to Washington, D.C. and cover Jimmy Carter leaving the White House. Little did we know that the Iranians would decide to release the hostages at that exact time. And that every one of the 52 hostages was alive, was well, and free. We are now live at the Capitol. And the producer and I found ourselves on a 747 bound for Frankfurt <laughs> that night. And uh, were there in position when outgoing President Carter arrived on Air Force One to head to Wiesbaden to greet uh, the hostages that had been released. Then his mission accomplished, former President Jimmy Carter boarded this presidential jet for the return flight to Robbins Air Force Base. And then, of course, the trek to Wiesbaden and being there for four days. And the trek back to upper New York State, to West Point, for the arrival of all the buses there. That moment has finally come. The 52 Americans and their families have arrived here at West Point, the U.S. Military Academy. They are home. The high point of my professional career always will be. I am proud to induct into Emmy's Silver Circle. Come on up, big guy, my friend, Jim X. <laughs> Storytelling is what I do. And be accurate, and be clear, and not make mistakes. That's important to me. Stay it on three for A5. And if there is any legacy, I hope that the co-anchors who I leave behind uh, will pick up the violin and play the tune every day uh, the way I've done it. Dedicated, determined, dependable. It's not just a catchy pro promotional phrase here at Channel 5. There are three words that best describe a man who served the city of Atlanta as a paternal presence of knowledge, information, and in some ways, solitude. A man to turn to, a man always there. To Jim Axel we say, farewell, 
but not goodbye. Yeah. Wow. Thank you very much. It's I just want to hold your hand. We haven't done this before. <laughs> and just say thank you for the best of everything. It's not goodbye, but no. we'll see you soon. It's and a great crew here, too, i got to tell you. From everybody at the 5 o'clock pod, we Ooh. wanted to give you something. We picked a gold clock here. <laughs> Time is on your side. You deserve every minute of it. Oh, thank you. Wow. How do you follow that? So it is time to move on. In my more than 34 years at Channel 5, I've worked with some of the finest journalists and television professionals that our business has to offer. I've shared these desks with some of the best anchors anywhere. I shall miss them dearly. I'll miss all the people behind the scenes who never get any recognition, but they're there. They're working for you every day. I'll miss you, our wonderful viewers. On my desk for years is a sheet of paper, and it has this quote. Storytelling, with all its limitations, is the best way we have to make sense of our world. I hope I've been a good storyteller for you. And now for one last time, I say, that is my time for now. Thanks for yours, and goodbye. That's Eyewitness News at 5. Eyewitness News at 6 begins right now. A breaking story tonight in Fulton County. A house goes up in flames, but what happened before the fire started sends a Fulton County officer to the hospital. We'll bring you the very latest developments. In the wake of an Eyewitness News exclusive report, arrest warrants are issued for four workers at a Forsyth County public store. They're accused of violating state wildlife laws by dressing and storing wild game in the store's meat department. And as temperatures plummeted to the teens this morning, nearly 100 Gwinnett County families woke up to a chilly surprise. No heat. We'll tell you what went wrong. Dedicated, determined, dependable. For Friday, December 20th, this is Channel 5 Eyewitness News. Good evening. I'm Lisa Rayam. And I'm Russ Spencer. Brenda Wood has the night off. We begin tonight with the breaking news story you saw first on Eyewitness News at 5. A man is in custody tonight and is being investigated in a criminal chain of events that includes the shooting of a Fulton County police officer, a major house fire, and a dramatic arrest on the snow-covered banks of the Chattahoochee River. Here is a live shot from Chopper 5 of the burned-out home. You can see the, the fire engine trucks there with their lights flashing. Apparently a total loss that home. Smoke still rising. You watched much of this live as it happened right here on Channel 5 less than an hour ago. Police are still trying to put together all that happened. Police officers raced to this home in North Fulton County to rescue an officer who'd been shot, and they found more than they expected, a home engulfed in flames and a suspect racing into the woods along the Chattahoochee River. While some officers attended to their downed colleague and rushed him to North Fulton Hospital, others fanned out into the countryside. Police helicopters spotted the suspect from the air, as did Chopper 5. Just after 5 o'clock tonight, a large group of officers cornered the man along the banks of the Chattahoochee. He looked like he thought about crossing, but within a minute, he approached the officers and gave himself up. They marched him in handcuffs back to the home where it all started. This is near Holcomb Bridge and Barnwell Roads in North Fulton County, a few miles east of Georgia 400. The massive home was destroyed by the fire, a fire that started after an apparent break-in. The officer who was shot was responding to an alarm at the home when the shooting started. Now, Channel 5's Logan Crawford is at North Fulton Hospital now, where the injured officer was taken. He joins us live on the telephone with an update on the officer's condition. Logan, what can you tell us? Russ, very good news report here from North Fulton Regional Medical Center. The officer is not injured. He was wearing his bulletproof vest when he was shot in the chest. He